This episode was recorded on May 9th, 2024, during the 20th Parliamerica's Plenary Assembly and 8th Gathering of the Open Parliament Network, titled Building Partnerships to Strengthen Democracy and Promote Human Rights. This meeting was organized by Parliamerica's and the Chamber of Senators of the National Congress of the Republic of Paraguay. In this presentation, Dr. Rosina Wiltshire outlines how human rights and democracy are deeply interconnected and underlines the challenges and opportunities that arise from this relationship. Her remarks underscore the urgency of addressing violence, inequality, corruption, and the impact of climate change to strengthen democratic systems and protect human rights. Dr. Wiltshire is a specialist in international development and human rights and was appointed by the OAS to its high-level group to promote the implementation of the recommendations of electoral observation missions on the political participation of women. So what are the connections between human rights and democracy? When I speak of human rights, I use the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is as a foundation, and this is enshrined in most of the constitutions. The declaration establishes the right to peaceful assembly and the right to participate in government and free elections, which are core elements of democracy. Democracy is the inclusive governance by the people including women who are 50% of the population, which promotes the human rights and well-being of all people. So they are integrally interconnected and human rights and democracy have been proven to deliver on peace. The greatest challenges to human rights and democracy are increasing wars, community violence, domestic violence, and violence against women with significant negative impacts on stability, economic well-being, impacts particularly on women and children, and increasing displacement of persons and migration flows. The spike in domestic violence began with COVID, when men and women and children were confined to the home because of the pandemic and has not significantly decreased. Another significant challenge is increasing poverty and inequality. And you heard my colleague speak of that. There are also increasing levels of uncertainty and hopelessness, particularly among younger persons. There's growing corruption and a deficit in democracy, as well as increasing authoritarian leadership. There are growing challenges to women's rights over their bodies and sexual reproductive rights. Another major challenge is climate change and the abuse of the natural environment. Lives and livelihoods are increasingly at risk with growing food insecurity, climate change threatens the existence of small island developing states with Caribbean islands significantly at risk. There is increasing power of information technology, artificial intelligence and social media, which offer both opportunities and challenges. There's opportunity to research, build capacity, expand services, and connect globally. But there are challenges of addiction, mind control, and replication of the old order because the values informing artificial intelligence programming are patriarchal values which reinforce race and gender bias, reinforce the notions of control and domination and abuse. So what we find happening with the social media, which has enormous opportunities, is that they are actually replicating the problems that we seek to solve. 
The eighth challenge that I list are increasing challenges to the multilateral order. There are increasing challenges to the regional and global orders, which were established to address the problems that I have identified, the wars, the inequality, injustice, and general violence. The ninth and last challenge that I will list is money, external power, and control continue to be valued over people and the earth. People and the earth are seen as labor and commodities for generating financial wealth. And if you look at our indicators of progress, while we talk about the importance of people, while we talk about the importance of nature, most of our indicators of progress and most of our values around progress are concentrated in economic, financial wealth and power and control. Because I'm an optimist, I like to talk about opportunities and what we can do to identify the challenge, to address the challenge. If I have, I will say that in fact, while I agree with some of the challenges posed by my colleague, what I see are causes linking back to impacts. So it's, for me, it's not that crime and corruption are not a cause or that fake news is not a cause, but there is a loop. They are both causes and consequences to the problems that we face. So parliamentarians must lead by example, with compassion and model integrity and commitment to democracy and human rights. The president this morning spoke of, said, speak the truth. I add, speak, the, be kind. So speak the truth and be kind. Secondly, strengthen legislation, policy and programs to protect human rights, women's rights as essential human rights and monitoring a, an accountability mechanisms are essential because we have the laws, but the accountability is often lacking. Thirdly, advocate for more women in decision-making positions. UN Women Research shows that when women are in power, overlooked policy issues which are central to human rights, democracy, and peace tend to be given higher priority. So we have a better chance of addressing the challenges if more women are in leadership. This is why we fought in Beijing and the Platform for Action advocates at least 30% of women in parliament. And while 30% is a critical mass, 50% is the goal. It is women's human rights to be equally represented. But we want just not numbers, we want a transforming of the way that politics takes place. We want politics for people and with people. Many Latin American countries have introduced quotas or temporary special measures which have had an impact. The Caribbean is lacking with only Guyana in the English speaking Caribbean having a quota system. Parliamentarians need to promote the quota system and legislation which promotes human rights and democracy, as well as systems of accountability as key to addressing the challenges. So this is an action point. The quota system works and it does have an impact when you have more women in politics. In five, ensure that we protect protect the human rights instruments and institutions, and monitor and report on the commitments made on the 
Convention on the Elimination Against Discrimination. CEDAW, Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, made by all, those commitments were made by all of our governments. Sixthly, strengthen the values and institutions which promote human rights and democracy and collaborate and empower, with and empower civil society organizations. We cannot, collaboration is key. And the people's voice represented by civil society organizations gives us strength to have an impact. Seven, reform the educational system to promote human rights and peace and democracy. Values are the foundation on which the laws rely for implementation and behavior change. We can have all the laws in the world. But if the values do not support the laws, the laws are empty. We have to address our value system, which elevates power, money, and control over people and promote love and kindness, including being kind to the earth, as key elements to address the challenges. Now, I know as parliamentarians, parliamentarians are very comfortable with legislation. But value change is more challenging than the legislation, but it is critical if we really want transformation and we really want to get human rights and democracy inculcated in the way we do business and rebuild trust. The values are the foundation which gives substance to the legislation and policy and lead to transformation. In our homes and schools, we have to actively promote love, peace, kindness, empathy, self-discipline, self-respect, and mutual respect, which underpin this human rights and democracy. How many of us value kindness, love, empathy, which are considered feminine characteristics? How many of us really practice this? And this is what leads to the transformation in policy the equality, justice, and peace that we are talking about. Strengthening these values re requires reform of our educational systems. We can't go into people's homes to tell them how they must bring up their children, but the children spend a lot of time in the educational system. And this is where we can make a difference. This is not about competition between men and women. It is an agenda which seeks to make both men and women more fully human, which puts us on a trajectory that doesn't make just having a positioning power the be-all and end-all of our activity and our political work. Each of us, including parliamentarians, has to begin with ourselves and model human rights and democratic principles. We are all part of the value system, and we must all work together to transform the present system in order to promote human rights and democracy with peace, equality, justice, and care of the earth, core priorities. In addressing these challenges, we will save ourselves, men and women, or children, or society, and the earth. Thank you.